I think it's appropriate on this night in this neighborhood to borrow some words from one of the great men to grace our city and the University of Washington. Theodore Rutke lived and worked here, wore his big fur coats here, drove his big old Buicks here, and wrote some of the finest poems in the English language down the street at the Blue Moon Tavern. As we struggle tonight to cast off the specter of Lent, to rise out of the detritus of our own brokenness and shame into something at least resembling hope, peacefulness, and contentment. Let's let Teddy talk to us about new life. This is called Cuttings Later. This urge, wrestle, resurrection of dry sticks. Cut stems, struggling to put down feet. What saint strained so much? Rose on such lopped limbs to a new life. I can hear underground that sucking and sobbing in my veins, in my bones, I feel it. The small waters seeping upward, the tight grains parting at last. When sprouts break out, Slippery as fish, I quail, lean to beginnings, sheath wet. The most effective and beloved of Rutke's poems are based around childhood memories he had of his father's greenhouse. He spoke of it this way. The greenhouse is my symbol for the whole of life, a womb, a heaven on earth. A quail. Lean to beginnings, sheath wet. Tonight, we are those little seedlings. We begin in darkness, curled up, surrounded by night and dark soil, and we are leaning and stretching into a resurrected life. We are surrounded by these tight little grains of earth, which are all the things that have gone into making us, us. All the things that have nourished us, and all the things that have hurt us. All the stories, all the songs, this is writ large in the many readings we have tonight that tell the story of salvation from the very beginning of being itself. And we are fed by the many stories of God's people throughout all of history, stories of perseverance in times of great danger, stories of rest and reassurance, stories of brokenness, and survival. That lovely earth that surrounds us carries everything. And that includes our stories about hurt. 
Most of us, out of experiences of pain and trauma, have developed very effective survival skills. We wouldn't be here today if we hadn't. We've learned how to protect ourselves from getting hurt. Though often what happens is that these tools stay with us, even when the danger has passed. We see this in post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans, though it happens for many of us in undiagnosed and less visible ways, especially if we've experienced oppression or discrimination of some sort. And those skills, too, are things that are part of that earth, those little grains of rich soil. They fed us, they nourished us, and held us. All those little thought patterns and habits and behaviors. We are literally, and metaphorically tonight, rooted in them. The resurrection is the opportunity to thank all those things that kept us safe and alive. And also, the resurrection is the deep urge to rise up out of them and be someone new. Sprouts break out. We quail and lean to beginnings, unsteady and unsure, but leaning nonetheless. It is never too late to be resurrected. It is never too late to become the rabble-rousing, civilly disobedient Jesus follower that you always wanted to be. It is never too late to become someone who is less critical of people. It is never too late to become someone who lifts weights. It's never too late. That is what this night teaches us. Tonight, as we listen to the story of saints and struggle. We lean toward new beginnings. And in the water of baptism are all sheath wet. Amen.